Hi, welcome to the Mammoth Tech Show. I'm Jeff, and today we'll be looking at a build we previewed a couple of episodes ago. And it's going to be my new gaming slash video editing suite. And we got a look at some of the new builds, including the case and the motherboard and CPU. But this project has been in the works for quite some time. I've been thinking about it for a while, wondering what route I should take, what components I should use. I was wondering whether I should go for a completely new build or use bits from my old PC. And as you can see from the rather sad remains here, which is my old gaming PC, I went down the route of using some of my old parts. And this poor chap here is now missing the graphics card, all the drives and the memory and is looking a little sad and uh, sorry for himself. But it's all now in a new case. And talking of cases, I was going to go for something similar to the type I used for Frankie's build a little earlier in the year, the Silverstone, where the motherboard is horizontal and you don't have the sides and you've got lots of access and it's really nice and easy to build with. But unfortunately, they are quite limited in the options for that one. There aren't very many of those around. In the end, I decided to plump for a case from a manufacturer I hadn't seen before, but I just really like the look of the case. It's from a company called First Player, and I like the styling. It looked like it could be a good case, and I just decided to roll the dice, it wasn't that expensive. So once I'd ripped all the bits out of this poor little fella here, combined them with all the new parts, and we'll get on with stuffing them into the new case. The case in question is a DKD3A from First Player. This is a budget case coming in at 35 to 40 pounds. And luckily, despite the mysterious iconography on the side of the box, is not full of spiders. It takes micro ATX or ITX motherboards and comes in black, or in the case of this case, white. Despite its budget price, it comes with some nice features, including a hinged tempered glass door, magnetic filters, and two RGB fans connected to a included controller hub. I was a little concerned that given the price this case would be full of hundreds of unfinished sharp edges ready to slice your hands open. But no, it's nicely put together and finished and was a pleasure to build in. So let's get on with it. The motherboard I'm using is a B550M Aorus Pro from Gigabyte paired with a Ryzen 3600. I went with this motherboard because it had good BIOS features, lots of USB, a nice integrated back panel, and it was on offer at the time. The RAM came from my old PC, it's 16 gigs of HyperX Fury running at 3200. We have 4 slots available for our 2 sticks, but the board helpfully shows you where you should put your first pair. We're going to use the fan that comes with this AMD Ryzen processor. So first we'll need to remove the mounting hardware that comes pre-installed on the motherboard. Now let's install the CPU. You may have heard that you need to align the golden triangles, but let's have a look at just how tiny these triangles actually can be. Here's the one on the motherboard, and here's the one on the CPU. The 
board drops easily into place and has a decent amount of clearance around the edge for those awkward front panel connectors. There are plenty of cable access hole options, but they are just plain holes. No fancy rubber grommets here. However, the case does score some unexpected posh points with its ability to allow you to mount your GPU vertically. We won't be doing it here, but you can if you want. Down in the basement, a hard drive cage keeps our drives from wandering away, and there's plenty of room for our Gigabyte fully modular 750 watt power supply. One thing to bear in mind with this motherboard is that although the graphics card slot is nice and shiny and reinforced, it also doesn't line up with the normal top slot of your case. Luckily I spotted this in time. Also, you can temporarily remove the vertical CPU bracket if you want just some more room to see what you're doing. But Will it post? Well, after a few initial resets to get itself in order, which is normal for a new Ryzen chip, we get the motherboard BIOS screen. Success! But what about the all-important RGB? That can be controlled with a little button on the top of the case, right next to the reset button. Don't get those two confused. Now we've successfully posted we can close the case up and start peeling. Like I was saying earlier, I'm really pleased with the first player case. It was really nice to build in, no nasty sharp edges, felt decent quality, gave you some nice options, and yes, just generally a good experience. And like I said, you could have it in black as well as white, but I decided to go for the white. And it's a good upgrade to all other graphics cards, the same as out of here. It's a boost from the old Skylake i5 found in here up to the Ryzen 3600. Don't worry though, nothing here will go to waste. The motherboard and CPU will be coming out of here and providing a nice upgrade to Frankie's aging, uh, very old office PC innards that she's got in her nice case. Shame about the innards build. So I hope you enjoyed the video. What did you think of the build? And did you like that first player case? Let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from us, why not subscribe and give the video a like? I've been Jeff, this has been the Mammoth Tech Show, and you've been very kind to watch. Thank you very much. Oh,